last time. We'll see if they put that same confidence in Smoothie now as we head into game two of the series. We're going to pick some bands, and Vlad will find himself on that ban list first. All right, so right off the bat, one of the options you who he's not going to be able to get that Vladimir. It's one of the champions that, you know, he is really taken to uh, after the changes. And definitely a good ban there from Cloud9. Good answer here as well. Rise, very, very high percentage uh, presence on the pick ban phase. Mm -hmm. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Yeah, might need another, uh, another tap to the balance there. Uh, I wonder, I really wonder too, you know, what type of uh, uh, game steal do you want to play now? Do they want a lane swap after, uh, you know, they may have a lack of confidence after going over and over and again, electing to start off those 2 v 2 skirmishes with yeah. the Cloud9 bottom lane? Or do they say, hey, Bunny's not in anymore. Uh, you know, we feel more confident against uh, Sneaky Smoothie lane and we'll return to standard lane setup because CLG, as we always mention, they're very good at lane swaps and they find a way, right. you know, get an extra couple seconds or some some sort of lead in the lane swaps, uh, usually for Darshan, which opens up some kind of uh, split push game. It was their dance previously, being able to move around the map better, gain a few seconds, get a few picks in that movement, or at least deter somebody from getting to lane faster. That's all CLG needed to grab an early, early lead. We were talking a little bit about how Cloud, Cloud9 has that gold lead at 15. So you'll see LG can start to buck back and get one of their own. Varus gets pulled out as well by Cloud9, actually. Yesterday Dur, uh, against Phoenix 1, they kind of got impatient against Phoenix Poke Comp and as a reason they lost that series. They got a little ahead of themselves, didn't say, hey, let's stay back, and just got themselves poked out. Just saying there, the Varus ban does mean CLG are gonna like, you know what? Uh, you're banning out our Varus counter, we're gonna ban out, or you're banning out our Azir counter, right. we're gonna ban out uh, Azir instead. No more Azir for Jensen. Uh, interesting adaptations here. CLG don't wanna get beat in the same way. They definitely haven't forgot about Jensen in the mid lane. As we talked about, you know, you might focus too much on the bottom lane mm -hmm. from last game. Bard continuing to get a lot of love as well on the support picks. What are they going to go with here? Nidalee still left up. We've seen some pretty great play coming from Xmithy across the spring on that Nidalee. Yeah, a lot of teams... Sivir has also been a pretty big pickup. A lot of teams still pretty split on the Nidalee here. Obviously, Cloud9 uh, are showing that they have a very clear tier list. Rek'Sai for them above the Nidalee. Yeah. Uh, they don't really feel like Poke uh, is that strong anymore. Uh, and so they just go with that Kindred ban and then steal away first pick Rek'Sai. It's it's uh, definitely a Meteos champion as well. You know, he's going to go that full defense. He is going to go with early sight stone. He's going to try and control the vision. She also has the Tremor Sense, so it makes that very easy for him. Let's see Jensen chatting it out with the team. Reaper just behind him as they pick three and four. Yeah, if I was them, five. I, if I was them, I'd be looking for some counter engage right now because anytime you're facing Sivir, uh, counter engage like Zyra, like Alawi, these champions that really excel when the other team is running towards you uh, can help out. The, other, the thing is, though, that you know experienced teams with Sivir just won't run straight at you, obviously, <laughs> and they're going to use that speed to dodge a lot of those counter engages. So it makes it a little bit tricky, and you do want some reliable CC. Uh, Ooh. In that situation. Waterworld pick up. Got Fizz and Nami coming in here. So you do have the tidal wave, a bit of the disengage you were looking for there, but it's not a true, I guess yeah. it's a true disengage. It can get, as you said, it's run, hard to use. run around yeah. as well if you have that Sivir ultimate. You're not yeah. just going to run right at them. Sivir speed definitely helps out there. Some yeah. people, you can run around Nami ultimate even without it, and mm -hmm. that will make it that much easier. Fizz, though, that's definitely one of the ones CL, uh, CLG were caught off guard by. Previously, um, coming into this patch, but uh, they're very well aware now, <laughs> as they've stated in interviews. Um, and obviously, you don't feel bad going into any melee matchup as Trundle. I think that Darshan will be just fine up there. Yep. He knows how to play that one out. Stick A always hovering his faithful old Warwick at least once a game. Just yep. for that nostalgia. This is, favorite, this is his favorite champion. People always you wonder, what? why do they always do that? <laughs> it's just particular to him. Personal preference. It's going to be the Xmithy Gragas this time. It is, and we're going to get Soraka coming out of Aphromoo this time. So they're actually going to be looking to keep those heals up. Maybe 
shut down some of these fights with some silence. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite synergies is uh, Trundle increased healing plus Soraka at his back. Trundle's already incredibly annoying to take down on the front line. Uh, if they're able to protect Soraka and allow her to just heal him up, uh, Darshan will be uh, very difficult to take down. Meanwhile, Smithy's going to take his hand at the Gragas. He's, uh, he's had a couple of highlight plays where the barrels come out in odd directions, but I don't know what you're talking about. In general, he's a strong Gragas player, and he is one of those tank jungle players as well. Feels very at home on it. This time around, though, it will be the opposite matchup, so yeah. he'll have to deal with the Rek'Sai speed clears and and ults back out onto the field. We'll see what he goes as well, because we saw uh, Meteos going the Runic on that when he played Gragas instead of the Cinderhawk, so. Yeah, most people. If it goes tank or not. Yeah, you know, generally favoring it. Also, whenever you have a Soraka, I really like to see Spirit Visage on everyone on your front line. It's already pretty good on <laughs> Gragas. You know, he's got his own heals, and cool direction's always great, but with a Soraka on your team, it's feels good, man. It's like, you don't have one? Go buy one right now. I'll buy one too. So Victor gets picked up for Jensen. Had that in the Phoenix One game. He was playing pretty insane on that. So he'll be back onto that comfort champion. Sneaky will get Caitlyn. So it makes the bot lane quite easy for them, or at least safe, I should say. Nothing's yeah. ever easy against Kinologic Gaming. Yeah, so definitely another uh, lane where Sneaky and Smoothie, they, they can go offensive. Uh, you know, and if, if the if CLG bottom lane mm -hmm tries to make something happen with a gank. Uh, you know, it does have a lot of CC. It's just hard to land the bubbles and into traps or the trap um, into bubble from uh, the Caitlyn Nami, but it really probably will require some more aggressive moves from 6A Afro move, which it looks like they probably won't do. They're just gonna focus on wave control uh, with Soraka, Sivir. You know, that's a combo that likes to shove you under, under your turret and keep you there, try and make you miss CS. But again, that victor last pickup for Cloud9, very common on the blue side because it's an easy blind pick for the mid laner. Right. Really hard to counter that one. And Huhi just goes for a team play here. Teleport from the mid lane for him on the Lissandra. Wants to make those uh, plays for the team. They have a uh, speed boost on Sivir to help out as well with the flanks. If you don't get your perfect flank, try and help you reposition. It was early game for Cloud9 last time. It looks like this one's going to go to mid game before we get too much action. That's all depending on really what the junglers decide to do. They've swapped it up on that side from Rek'Sai and Kragus. And we have a new support in for Smoothie subbing back in for Bunny Fufu on Cloud9. So switching things up here as we come into game two of the series. Keep those predictions up to date by tweeting with hashtag C9win or hashtag CLGwin. We'll keep checking those and tally them up as we get into game. Cloud9 has yet to not play all three games in a best of three. <laughs> Can they break that trend today? They have yep. so far played all three games in each series they've been in. And hopefully to close this one out in two here as they go against CLG. Now recomped, revamped, and back on the rift. We're about to get into game number two. It is Counter Logic Gaming versus Cloud9. So let's see what these teams have for each other. Yeah, let's take a look. I'm very excited actually to see Huhi on this Lissandra. It's definitely a champion that has a good kit for his playstyle. He likes to get right into the middle of the team fights. Yes. Set people up on his team for success. Lissandra's great. You know, I expect the majority of ults from Huhi to be self ults. Uh, unless it is like, oh, we caught somebody out with Sivir Speed Boost, you know, or Gragas Ultimate knocks someone Welcome back. Um, but Rift. generally, I like to see him get in the middle there, create some chaos, self ult, buy some time for this. Sivir to get out her AOE. Just a little walk. Be like, look at my talisman. Look at my machete. Sick. Everybody's Sick uh, indeed. playing follow oh. the leader. Nobody gets the touch. <laughs> Just look. Safe. By the way, that, you know, Grog, people are like, oh no, Grog had to start body slam to try and get that. Nah. He starts body slam anyway in the jungle. That little uh, little bit of health saved, but not enough to creeps. Minions and they took fallen. out the split damage from Gragas Body Slam quite a while ago. No, uh, no drop off for hitting multiple creeps. Sad Pretty is. standard lanes here. All right, it looks like we're gonna have an attempt at an interrupt on the Gromp rather than both teams taking it. So 
We'll see. Maybe a small health advantage. Oh, they cancel that. It will be everyone going into lane, just taking their jungle camps. See how efficiently they can pull it off. I think he tanks the damage. Smoothie's gonna heal him. Yep, there it is. And trade it off. Plus, then they have. Uh, they do that because, you know, AD carry can heal up a little bit with those extra couple autos. Yep. Due to the Doran blade start. And then different for Sora. Exactly. Uh, melee. One, two drop. Okay. So pretty close. And uh, they end up pretty even here. This is going to be a very uh, minion focused bottom lane since both of them have supports with heals. And they're going to be sustaining. Uh, actually, constant autos. Ooh. Smoothie and Afro. Nobody backing down. Those are some stale bananas or something. That's some damage there. Darshan getting pushed back by impact on that early level two as well. So we are getting the aggression in each lane still. And they're try trying to stand toe to toe. Pushed up by who he already, as we expect in the mid lane, as he just keeps queuing in the minion waves. And 6A on mana just pushes himself up to try and get some autos in. Yeah. As he leaves Afro to throw out the start call. That mid lane you mentioned is something I want to keep an eye on because Lissandra is one of those champions. Uh, you talked about who he's got this style where sometimes he's in a matchup, he only wants to shove up and then get early back so he can get small purchases and gain just the Doran's Blade up on someone as we're seeing him do now. You know, he hasn't even taken a bunch of damage. He hasn't even had to burn through any potions, but you shove up that lane on Lissandra uh, very quickly with your Q spam. And uh, he just takes that opportunity, get an extra Doran's Ring, and uses the teleport to get right back in the lane. Try and uh, continue the shove. He only missed a few minions on that one, actually. So he should be good. Ping's just below him. Yeah, he might get punished here for his shoving place down. Nope. Oh, they didn't let him take the claw. This could be the kill. No, oh, he's dead. No aggressive summoners, he's though. Toast. They got to hit him. Oh, he's going to give the kill up. Got stuck in the gravity that, field. Very yeah. nicely timed. So that's that's something that you're going to see a lot is when junglers go for the early gank on Lissandra and the claw is thrown out pretty early there. The timing, it's so close on you know, when to go for that flash knock up or stun, depending on what champion you are, yep. to try and stun her so she can't take the end of the claw, and the claw will actually still time out. Oh, Impact gonna have to blow a lot here to escape that one yeah. versus one. Darshan yeah. also has that wave under his control, I think. See how quick that lane changes. But yeah, let's take a look at the timing here. Since the claw was thrown out pretty early there, you know, Medias was like, all right, I'm in there for the exact right range plus timing on that claw. It's gonna be off. And you know, at worst as a jungler, uh, she's gonna be able to trade that and not have to burn her flash, but at best you get that first blood guaranteed The flash is also blown. Yep. So who he has to abandon that playstyle He wants to play of constantly shoving with Lissandra. He has no teleport to get back to lane He has no flash for safety and mm -hmm. He's actually gonna just continue right back at it because the minion wave was pushing away from him and He had no choice. That was really nicely uh, pinged out by Jensen as well Completely pinged out. He was just like I'm gonna go around lock him up no teleport now to get back to lane on that either. And a little love from McSmithy towards the top side. Remember, Impact just flashed. He's trying to bait it, Darshan, here. He's like, use your abilities. <laughs> Playful but, and uh, trickster, please. Just, uh, Smithy's gonna stick around. He's using a lot of time up here. But, uh, persistence sometimes does pay off. Darshan really tried to bait hard. This is so clear. Impact should definitely know. He's like, Darshan's just going berserk right now. Unless he recently contracted rabies or something. There's a jungler here. <laughs> I think it's all right in that case. <laughs> That's great, though. Uh, Sticks eight out from going hard on the bot. Impact playing very smart in that top lane. It's not, he wants that dark seal to go to good use, not bad use. So he stays back. Smithy is actually going to help get this lane pushed up a little bit because he spent, like you said, a little too long up here having fun in the top lane. He's still up in CS though, as he was cruising around the jungle, jungle making sure that the CS was happening as Medios was ganking. Yeah, and Medios has gone for the super early sight stone, trying to get those wards out here uh, with Rek'Sai, but it is semi-answered with Smithy going trackers. Ah, uh, yes. Calming noise of Rek'Sai tunnels. <laughs> Just tremoring underground. Pink wards used for him, and he gets some counter jungling off with Whoa! Him. You are too deep, my friend. Ooh, he actually held onto his ult. That is uh, 
some confident play. And that's when he knew. Or did he just up. pop six from that kill? Ah, either way, who he's going to have already. And it's a really aggressive move from Jensen that gets punished. No cleanse for him. So, oh, this is just going to be a trade of damage, yeah. actually. I mean, I see the amount of wards that Cloud9 has, but still, let's see the replay again to see how really sure of himself Jensen was to go in for that. It's one of those things we usually tally up to Cloud9. We're like, okay, they're going to have a lot of mid-pressure. Oh, Smithy going to get punished on this pink ward. A lot of life loss, but uh, Soraka's here. Through the ignite. Oh, oh, it's burning. He's good. Phew. Close call there for uh, Smithy. Almost cost him his life to just go back and forth and play with a ward there, not giving enough respect to mid. We'll see what happens here. Uh, so oh. who he was five. He gets six off of the kill, so yeah. And then at that point, leveling up with Dangerous Game as well, I believe. Nick Smithy was coming out of base, not around the wards either. So he was like, oh, there's no jungle. Anyways, regardless, Jensen, he had earned his classic lead on CS in the mid lane that we have seen so often from him. Aphromoo gets knocked up, but probably will be the end of oh. it. Yeah. But uh, Jensen does get punished. Still retains his CS lead, though. Yep. With the help of Meteos just being a menace in that mid lane, knowing he can continuously punish there, even in a, a short 2v1, and still give himself enough sustain, or have enough health, I should say, to head back into the jump. And not too much of a gold lead just yet for Cloud9, but a lot of back and forth this game. A lot less deaths. Everybody's playing very, very careful coming into this one, and top lane may get a little bit more love. If Smithy spent some time up here before, this time he wants to try and get something for him. Yeah, they definitely don't want... Um, Unfortunately, that's a big wave. Yeah, you don't definitely <laughs> don't want your top laner to get ganked once Fizz has level 6, because even though mm -hmm. Darshan's got the lead in this, uh, Fizz at level 6 is really good at setting up ganks for his jungler. Uh, and uh, very, very often, junglers uh, in that lane will want to get a Fizz snowballing as well, so it's kind of good on pretty much all fronts. And uh, that's just a cautionary move there by Smithy to head up. It was an attempt at a counter gank yep. in case they tried to you know, go with that Fizz ult and Rek'Sai combo onto Darshan, but Minos not even making a move over there. He's focusing on that farm in Vision Game as we talked about. Whoa! Throws down the Chaos Storm in the gravity field. Jensen's <laughs> out of mana on this one, so he's basically going to give himself some time in lane. Rush! Should, teleport! Should be a back and then a... Uh, back to mid lane for Jensen there. Like Smithy was seen here clearing out tunnels just a little bit ago. He spent a lot of time there, so I was gonna say, oh. might want to get out. Alphamu with pressure in the bot lane, and it looks like Stixay actually tried to step two on that one. Sneaky says, all right, let's do it. No Tide Caller's blessing to go across as well to help Sneaky out on that one. Very close Peacemaker to taking down Aphromu. So we haven't been down here, but these guys are still going at it. Back yeah. and forth, 87 to 87 in CS. Another look at that bottom lane. We talked about Smoothie. You know, he's bringing in the Nami yep. for the bottom lane. They want to go a little bit more heal oriented. Fight over the. Sustain no, the pain. Not even a fight over the Raptors. And just give them all away. Got me all excited. Traps down. Sticks they choose not to walk on that. So blue buff over to Jensen, things much quieter this game here as Cloud9 have not been able to get the, uh, either lane, I should say, going. At any rate, having a lane do as good as they did last game would kind of put you in the lead. But CLG has staved that off. 800 gold lead here, 10 minutes in for Cloud9. Yep, and a lot of it is coming um, from that mid lane uh, with uh, Jensen, you know, CS lead. Plus he got, had that kill earlier on. So it's about 600 gold sitting there is the discrepancy. Um, other than that, yeah, small around the board. 200 or so for top, for Darshan. Getting that Trundle melee matchup always feels good. And uh, he is trying to punish impact as much as he can. Plus, of course, those visits from Smithy so often up there mean that Impact can't really ever go aggressive because they're not expending any effort into Vision on the top side. Even though we said, oh yeah, Meteor is playing Vision-centric, Sight Zone early. Right. He's used most of them around mid and bottom side. So Cloud9, they're kind of leaving Impact up there. Deal with your own problems. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to farm it out. 
very reliable in holding his CS leads. Jensen now 20 CS up just after that first claw kill, really. We did see a semi-repeat by Meteos. He came by to say hi. But who he's just been using that teleport to try and get back to lane. Try and match Jensen here. He hasn't been able to really produce anything. And when Jensen gets the chance, Chaos storms him out of lane each time. I really like that style as well, where you're not... You're not cautious with your ultimate. You're just going to keep mm -hmm. throwing it out to get lane dominance. We might have a skirmish up here first, but no. Okay, so anyways, it's a style that we saw a lot with Talons in high elo, like solo queue play, because yeah. the cooldown's so short on his ultimate, you can clear a wave plus get a bunch of damage down. So people weren't even using it super early to assassinate. Yeah. You know, just gain a whole bunch of, you know, lane control, and it'll be back up and very like, short amount of time. Back in the day when you had a Gragas mid, right? Your cast would come up, you throw your cast and get the cooldown. Anytime you got a low cooldown, high damage. Heck yeah. Use it to <laughs> gain lane dominance. Slowly doing that here in the bot lane with auto attacks. Not as gigantic of an attack, but still used efficiently. It's 121 to 118. Like we said, they're staying very, very even without really the kill pressure in that bot lane to allow their bloodthirst to come through. You notice with the first really deep move, um, and he does get chased out, out, but not punished. Finally seeing him test, testing the waters here on both sides. It's going to be a Cloud Drake for the first one up. Doesn't look like there's going to be any fight for it just yet. Jensen getting a little bit of love in mid lane. Cleansed immediately on the tomb, and he will be safe. Yeah, good cleanse. He's able to hold on to his flash there, uh, judging the distance that he had uh, for Smithy. I mean, you always judge the distance accounting for flash mm -hmm. of, your, of the enemy jungler uh, because flash on Gragas is pretty much guaranteed if you are close enough for the body slam flash. So he's able to walk out with just the cleanse. Definitely uh, meaningful. Up top, though, Darshan finally able to get some alone time with the turret. He's been fighting impact over and over, trying to yeah. push him out of lane. Finally able to get it. And once again, they have Smithy up there just for support in case there was some kind of counter move from C9 if they tried to hold on to it somehow. But they're going to give it up. Impact going to drop that top turret. A little bit of gold now over to CLG. And Stix A and Alpha are just going to hold tight. Very, very slow compared to last game. I've said it before, but it looks like they're giving each other a lot of respect or rather not wanting to lose the game kind of intention yeah. coming from both sides. This was not done last game, and it will very much so help Darshan and his approach to that top lane. Yeah, it's, it's a really good situation for CLG uh, to actually go for this because they just took the top lane. Um, Darshan's gonna be able to pick it up, yeah. You want them. there you go. <laughs> uh, Darshan's gonna be able to further cement his one versus one lead yeah. against impact, and that's gonna be huge for ZLG. Classic style where they like the one four split push with just Darshan splitting. Um, they also did some variations of the one three one where they had multiple split pushers and who he might get to that point. As of right now, he's hurting a little bit, but it definitely is an option for them. Now that Darshan has this glimpse of the Void buff, uh, I think he's just going to teleport back to lane here to try and catch this wave. But they might Ooh. give it up, and he might just walk so they can make a double teleport play. Interesting. Okay. They are going to give that up, uh, that wave up, and maybe they'll open up for some deeper wards. Look for them to try and set up deep wards to capitalize on a Ooh. teleport from Darshan, because he's going to lose probably two waves yeah, for that watch that. <laughs> Even I want that CS. I mean, the reason why I was questioning is because this is a crucial moment where they're both about to hit level 11. Now Impact has that level 11, but uh, he's not going to be able to, to make use of it. Mid lane, there it is. There is pop back. Jensen gets the explosive cast. Smoothie's oh. doing everything he can to save him. Throws out the heals, and he does keep Jensen alive. Here's the teleport in, though. Darshan's going to be right in the middle of the fire, and he gets cooked up. That's three down for Counterlogic Gaming, and a call that could and should have been changed. Oh my goodness, C9 protect their own. Jensen wow. had no cleanse from the previous move mid, and the repeat from CLG fails because Smoothie gets there just in time with the heals, allowing him to buy more time, and that all of Cloud9 arrived. Also, CLG didn't get to make any play elsewhere on the map as you know the duo lane was trying to push into turret, but that's pretty much all they got, and that's not gonna mean much after all those kills go over to Cloud9. Very big start for them.
You were saying a little bit of disengage would go uh -oh, a long way. Uh-oh, they're not way. done. Look at the uh, Soraka might be the target. They are pushing far right, they are back walk. behind. <laughs> oh, they just squeak behind very slowly. They get themselves in the right spot, though, so they can take that out nice and easy. And finally, we see the first bit of aggression actually backfire, really. The wards were there for Cloud9, and they knew how to recuperate. They knew how to get themselves back in there, and Smoothie, just being off on the wing, played a very big role in disengaging that fight. Yeah, I mean, last game, it was Silji trying to create from the bottom side. This time, it's Silji creating mid. They do get uh, the combo, but Smoothie arrives with the heal plus the bubbles, and everybody's there. I mean, Cloud9 collapsed so quickly. Oh, the shields. That's oh. really got to hurt, because we are just talking about how CLG were making their small steps. Like, okay, Darshan, right. he's not going to use his teleport, so he loses these two waves, but hey, we're going to make a double teleport play. He's got that glimpse of the void, too, so he can get advantage in his one versus one. Mm -hmm. A lot of that goes out the window. They use their teleport there uh, in a fail play so that they also die. And uh, a lot of that advantage they were building up goes out the window. Darshan still, though, has the buff, so he gets that 5% damage reduction. He also can right, no proc his members. extra magic damage. I don't know if he can even up a three versus one, though. Oh, the flash bait to keep Darshan in. He just came back from being down and goes back. 34 seconds on the clock for him. A bubble from Smoothie as Smithy tries to body slam his way to safety. And it does not look good for Counter Logic Gaming as they once again try to wander into C9's jungle. Yeah, the counterplay here from C9, they're just Team play is overcoming CLG aggression. Every time CLG try and create, not able to keep the rest of Cloud9 in check. And C9 collapse first, again for the advantage. And this kill distribution as well has to feel good. Two on some of the solos, the 80 carry assists for your jungler and support as they take down top turret. Coming up on 20 minutes in, six to one now as Cloud9 catapults the lead. Yeah, I mean, still, G, if they're going to go for these moves, I mean, they do have some vision, but it doesn't look like they're really checking all the boxes, and they're not quite sure that they do have control of everyone, because let's take a look at this. It's a it, bait. Grokus, you look at that. Grokus actually has the inside track, so that's Smithy there, and he has vision of Rek'Sai, so Darshan knows at least Rek'Sai is coming. Smithy's backing off because he can't take the Rek'Sai one versus one, uh, and Darshan goes for another trade, and it's just, yeah, they just let him get inside there. They had vision of him. Maybe it was bad communication for the team. But um, it looked like actually a very common and pretty easy collapse for C9. They're able to clean up the extra kills here. CLG look a little bit out of sorts yeah. still. Shaken by that first game where things really went downhill in, uh, in lane phase. Tried to use Wish as well there to save Darshan in the exit. So quite a few resources used across the map when, like you were saying, CLG kind of want to use these on their own accord when they get up to an event and make it happen. Those teleports are coming back up. It may be something else they can put in the book to make happen. Yeah, it definitely makes me want to bring up that point again that we were talking about for Cloud9. It's They were struggling a little bit bringing in the new players, you know, and working with... They said they were working on a new communication style because... This obviously is the right. team that for so long had High as the solo shot caller, but now they brought in Reaper as the coach, uh, and he's trying to, first thing he's trying to work on is clean up the communication of the guys, so, you know, everybody's adding value, everybody's communicating small right. bits of information. It's a, it's an interesting thing that you have to balance, because you don't want your communication to be overwhelmed with everyone talking at once, uh, but you do need information from all points of the right. map, and it looks like Cloud9 have really ironed it out so far, as they've been able to collapse very quickly, you know, everyone's arriving on time much quicker than TLG. Yeah. So definitely props to Cloud9 uh, with their recent focus in that area. Making sure that it's not just one person talking. Nice <laughs> job, Xmitty. Slick moves there for the big man. Whoop. Just sidestepping. Ooh. Ooh. Watch out for the explosion on that laser. Could take him out with the afterburn. It's also a great way to up your damage per minute numbers. 
if you just as Victor, full throwing out full combos, not for kills, but <laughs> every time it's on cooldown on your opponent, just to force him out of lane. You well, gain, bam! Gain some map control. Just hit him. Oh, who he know? On to Sneaky. There's nobody around him to follow up, though. That's what CLG needs. The rest of the cavalry, and they'll fly through. Sneaky's down, and now with that big ultimate and a little bit of the DPS gone, CLG can they push forward happily on this one. Darshan looking for a pillar that would stop Meteos. Yeah. But they got to look for the lanes as well. Can they push something up here and not just fight? That's a pretty good pick for CLG, and it's on the AD carry, so it should open up the map, but they need to get more. Uh, they've been bleeding gold, and they really need to... Uh, yeah. They get the mid turret. That's going to open up a lot. Look, they're looking for so much here, actually. Would be a dangerous dive. Once you sink your teeth in, you don't let go. It looks like what CLG has right now. Impact, however. Trying to push them back, and he'll get Jensen up in the line. Once they get the laser in from Victor, they should be able to clear the waves. Very necessary uh, move there from CLG. Nice teleport from who he got right into the middle with Lissandra. Uh, he did use his ult offensively, so he was a little bit more in danger, mm -hmm. but they had the numbers advantage, and they saw Jensen bottom lane, which is key. They know this is a mid laner without teleport. Jensen cannot get over here, so... They go super aggressive, and they do get the turret afterwards, even though Impact there are going to fail that wall. We've seen a couple of pros do it on various champions today, or this, this week. It had to be one as well. Just makes you feel more human. <laughs> yes. Pro level. Pro, pro level human. All right, Cloud Drake up next. Looks like Cloud9 should easily get it. They have this pretty deep ward line, honestly. And uh, CLG not willing to risk much for a Cloud Drake. They're already in the hole as far as the gold goes. They don't want to fight a, a team fight without having the opportunity for Hoogie to use a flank again, uh, having used his teleport to grab that kill previously. So Cloud9 will claim Cloud Drake. All is right <laughs> automatically. Heading towards the top side. So it looks like we're going to start to get the split from Chronologic Gaming. How will it split, cl spread Cloud9 thin, though? Actually, doesn't look like who he wants to go any further than just past that river, keeping himself on a good rule of thumb there in safety. He heads back down towards mid. So really, CLG's just kind of buying time, walking around the map right now. Yeah. As they get the lanes pushed up, wait for Darshan in the bot lane. He has one more turret on the outside, and that's the one that CLG will be looking for if this Baron never falls. Yeah, they do have to be a little bit cautious um, with how they choose to get back into this game. Um, because who he right now, no teleport, he's going to the split push, but he's got three people on his tail. Claw was just used to farm. Couldn't have been better. Meteos wanted to see that with the rest of the team. They are pushing mid. Counter-Logic Gaming Over is going to meet Jensen. Get mid turret. And it looks like they're actually going all the way down to the bottom to try oh. and get a kill and possibly two turrets along the way. They stopped that idea and now go back to mid with the <laughs> Sivir ultimate so they can pincer move onto Jensen. It was all in the plans all the time. Pretty good rotation there from CLG. They won't end up getting a turret though. They chose the kill. Now the teleport Whoa. counter from Cloud9. Couldn't get the pop up just yet. Waiting for it. Afro. Yes. The rest of the team's gonna be able to clear it out. Aphromu is very hurt on the backside, trying to throw some heals and silences in for the team. He's almost gonna go down. If Impact can get to the back line, he does not flip forward over Stixay. Impact still, oh, still alive! Lives through that as well from the Equinox of Aphromu, and they're still going on members of Cloud or CLG oh, right now. Stixay gets taken down. What a messy fight back and forth. Slivers of health running back and forth. Yeah, the extended team fights with these support healers on both sides. And a surprise crit to end it there actually ends up very close as far as kills traded. That's going to be uh, all the teleports, I believe, on cooldown for a while to who he's coming to back up. So the craziness has ended for the meantime. But uh, C C9 actually, let's see here. At this point, they're going to use uh, teleport to answer. Aphromoo doesn't get finished off here because of the heal from Stixay and his own ultimate. Then Impact has a rough time getting back in to finish him off. Flash is <laughs> out there, and Aphromoo staying on uh, slivers of health, trying to throw out single more heal for the team. See, look at this. Stixay does get him with the crit uh, for the end there. Down to the wire. Really such spread out fights, waiting to see what happens when these teams meet five on five. We had Jensen actually going down in the beginning of that one, if you remember, mm -hmm. to the on the hunt. So it was almost like an after afterthought once it happened. The other thing, you know, worth noting in these skirmishes where we see Stixay 
pretty much one versus one-ing or one versus two-ing is that he has the Phantom Dancer. So he is going to get that extra damage reduction on whoever's yeah. trying to dive him. In addition to the uh, Soraka healing him, he's going with this um, pretty defensive uh, second item, I guess, uh, for the Phantom Dancer. I think he's going to go Infinity Edge after so he can get a uh, crit. Actually, goes Armor Penetration right after. Uh, so no Infinity Edge crits for this Sivir for quite a while, whereas the Caitlyn already has Infinity Edge. That's going to yeah. be a pretty big difference. But we may see it in the difference of those dives. If you've got a healer healing you up, Phantom Dancer, extra kiting ability, as well as damage reduction on the target you, that you are hitting. Uh, might be the difference between Impact taking him down in one of those dives and uh, sticking yeah. up. So, interesting choice. We will be able to monitor. Definitely keep an eye on those AD carries, especially with the sustain coming in from the supports. They're up a little bit longer. They're the ones trying to get the last hits and get all the autos in. Definitely true. As far as cutting through... Oh! Okay, no plot taken. But yeah, as far as cutting through frontliners, though, Sneaky with the Infinity Edge is going to be able to do it a, a lot better. Whoa! Stixay with the rest of the team trying to route Cloud9 here as they come around mid, but it doesn't work. Tidal Wave gets thrown out. They get washed away for the time being. But when does Meteos not re-engage? Goes back in onto Darshan with just little to no catch coming in there, so Cloud9 can't hold on. Disengages means everybody heals back up because they're both back in healers in these comps. So it's going to be Cloud9 with the inside track on the minions and mid lane, though. Can they cut CLG off from the side? Let's see how they work it. No on the hunt to rush into the fight. An explosive cast can oh, separate track. Cloud9. Who he? Looking to alt somebody, but impact would not be his target. Yep. Who he does have flash as well. Both teams here playing very cautiously, positioning around mid lane and backing off. Now it's CLG with the lane pressure as they're running their minion wave up. They're just they're trading ridiculous. positions here. All right, tank's going in, though. Medios in. Impact is in. Who he's going to be in the middle. He's going to Frozen Tomb himself. Impact should be going down here. A nice reset coming in from Stixay. He gets a kill for himself. Oh! And we're going to see Impact go down. They fly back in. The pillar separates them as the double kill comes in for Stixay. They're reassessing the fight. Oh, Stixay puts himself on the back line, but Sneaky's doing the same. A few more hits. Subjugate's taking him down, and he gets hit one last time. He will go down. And that's going to be the kill coming in for Darshan before he falls valiantly. Three for three on each side. I love me some uh, team fights with full on wow compositions of tank main <laughs> tanks up front, healers at the back, DPS actually flashing in. I'm gonna, definitely going to need to take a replay of this one. Let's take a look here because Meteos walks his way in. So this tank actually takes a decent amount of damage on the way in, but Crucial Flash here from Huhi avoids the silence. He was on the very edge of it. So Huhi getting off his ultimate there was a big part of CLG getting the first leg up, but the gravity field from Jensen was the counter only to be answered by Smithy's Body Slam Flash. Then here is the flash in from Sneaky and he's able to kill Stixay with that crit through the healing. And then he's on the front line where Darshan just walks right up with his extra move speed for the clobber kill. Ends up three versus uh, three kills for each side and both people, both teams come away licking their wounds. Definitely what you want to see a game two of the series. Both teams seem to have each other's number on this one. A little bit of a lead from C9 still means counter logic game will come out even in these fights. And we just saw them go up. Look at Smithy's legs right now. Always, always. <laughs> You gotta keep, you gotta keep the move going, man. Man, That's man. That's the adrenaline. Team fights like that, gotta get going. <laughs> That's the adrenaline. I know I'm always uh, got the jitters when high intensity plays go flying around, and I'm sure we're gonna see more of them. Like I was just saying, that was a run up and down the mid lane, dictated by either team, and then to the other side of the map. And finally, Cloud9 and CLG both said, "We've had enough. We're gonna fight." That's all fizzled out. It's 12 to 7 now. 30 minutes. Five more minutes. Oh, we'll start to see elders. Down. Five more minutes, you see Star Smoothie goes down immediately. C9 thinks they're just gonna walk away with an Ocean Drake, but it's really going over to CLG. X Smithy goes down for the smite fight, and it's gonna be a double kill now for Stixay. Looking for a few more on the outside, throws the boomerang in, now tries to close the gap. Jensen's gonna be in by himself. He gets taken down by Huhi, and Cloud9 just set themselves up for destruction. There it is, you go with classic compositions, classic uh, counters right there. Kill the healer first, then they're able to yeah. take over the That's it. it. CLG also claim the Ocean Drake afterwards, and they're moving to clear out the wards at least. Uh, Impact's hovering on the back side, but Aphromoo's got to be really careful with his positioning because he's sitting at half right now. 
Here comes Stixe as well. So Stixe and Impact gonna be the two to try and interrupt this. Oh, good damage. Just Doesn't a quick peek a from Impact. He gets back out. Exhaust. A lot of Baron damage. Whew. All right, they Let's stopped go. the Baron once again. Boss counter, giving up on that one. Let's see how, how quickly they return to the scene of the crime now. Ooh. Playing with fire. He's safe. All oh. right. Now, I think the thing that CLG, their next real big breakpoint uh, for these team fights is going to matter is going to be that Infinity Edge uh, for the Sivir. But look at that once again. Beautiful job there. Smithy, Gragas Ultimate, pop that healer back out. Once the healer's done, they know they can just go straight forward and ram uh, into the Dragon Pit. It does end up costing uh, Smithy his life, though. Uh, right there, he gets bursted down. Doesn't really respect the gravity field. But they do end up cleaning up in the end anyways. Plus, he was able to get the dragon before going down. So, both teams are going to be looking to take out those healers first. It's just very difficult to get back there. Uh, CLG do have probably better options to uh, uh, attack that healer as yeah. they do have the media assault, as we just saw. And then who he can get right in there with some silver speed. But uh, it is still going to be dangerous, and I would still recommend self ult from Huhi, unless he has a very clear, you know, numbers advantage or you know, picking somebody off. Uh, because buying himself in vulnerability time is crucial on this Lissandra. It, and their team actually controls so much terrain when you think about their ultimates, or even Darshan with his pillar as well as the ground contaminant to be able to run faster. They have so much displacement and control an area so quickly, yeah. and then on the hunt gets you where you want to be. Really looking good for CLG right now in the way we're describing it. But they got to make it work themselves. So far, only down 2k. I got 1.7. They still have a chance. Yeah. I mean, the gold's shrinking, plus the items that are crucial we talked about. Mm -hmm. That Infinity Edge is now complete on Sivir. Uh, so Stixay will get crits on the whole team with the Ricochets. And CLG are feeling a lot better about this game. They do not want to let Cloud9 take this one away. Because CLG have had a pretty rough start to the season. You know, week two, they want to bounce back pretty quickly. This would be a really big way uh, to get there. They want to push this to a game three. They still have definite work ahead of them, though. Cloud9, pretty strong. Just the ward game now, trying to set up that line of security so they can get themselves the initiation that they want. CLG displaces one person, and that's the kill they need. Exactly. Cloud9 can move across the map very fast and get themselves to the fight if CLG cannot make it happen fast enough. It's all about that team fight setup at this point. As you say, setting up vision, that's the first step. Then you can apply initiation when you see the enemy out of position. It's all about flanks here for CLG. Mm -hmm. You know who he's going to try and get right back in there, uh, cause some chaos. Because Stixa and Afro actually feel pretty good about kiting backwards. Uh, and they feel pretty safe on their own, especially uh, with Smithy back there trying to body slam off. Uh, C9 don't really have a great dive comp. They're more of a melt your frontline comp there and try and yeah. you know, just let Caitlyn sit there, get off her Runon's crit auto attacks. Video's <laughs> trying, to, trying to get this trundle off his turret, but it's a difficult task. This is, bring the fish down. We'll use him. Impact's going to come down to assist now. It actually looks like this could get pretty scary for Counter-Logic Gaming once they push themselves up to these turrets. They get Tidal Waved in a bad spot, and they'll be using Sivaral to get out of these fights. Definitely true. And we do have the double Spirit Visage that uh, I was talking about for the front line when you have a Soraka comp. Smithy and Darshan, they're both champions that want to build Spirit Visage anyway. Plus, they have a Soraka, so ridiculous amounts of healing. Whenever we see a lot of healing riv, you know what we want, that healing reduction on the enemy team, so everybody should be getting that uh, Executioner's Calling, Upgrade there. Uh, Lord Dominix actually was picked up for Stixe, because uh, they're not quite worried about the healing as much, even though I don't know, Nami, late game healing, I guess you don't have to be as worried about it, but it's still pretty significant. Oh, it's Smithy with a bit of a misplay there. Body slams over the wall, he's gonna be helped here. That is who uh -oh. he in. Frozen Tomb on himself, then the Zanyas. Right in a row, he's gonna get pinned out immediately. The team can't follow up. 
Yep, and here goes C9 aggressively going for Aphromu and Stixay. Backline cutting away. Doesn't look like it's ending just yet. Chaos Storm pushes out Stixay. The fight in the bot lane still going on between Impact and Darshan as it looks like Xmithy wants to keep tabs on Cloud9 now. They're gonna head towards Baron. He's gotta keep that 50-50 a possible a smite for himself if they do go for it. They were able to stop Cloud9 once. They're looking slightly low and Cloud9 may just be looking for bait here. Yep, gonna clear it out, and Smithy walks right in. Oh, oh! Bro! Go for the heals, that's the deals. Now they're gonna be onto it, Smithy. He flashes away, and now he's down below half HP. is gonna be able to do what he can to help stop this Baron, but CLG <laughs> is now completely <laughs> playing Everybody with back fire. Everybody the boss! They're gonna converge once again. It's a three-man defense for CLG, trying to interrupt this nice boomerang there. Tidal Wave is there for Smoothie if he needs to push the team out. Medio says, I'm going in head first. We'll take Xmithy first. The smite fight is gone now. It's all up to whoever can just take the Baron, but now I've had too many res on the side of CLG to stop that, and it looks like the answer is yes. Who he is back up, but oh, wait. C9 stay, they were about to back. They have to know the timers of the new members of CLG coming back up here. If Darshan turns, they might know that is a bait into that fight, so Cloud9. They try for another one, but yeah. may just buy CLG more time to set back up here on their way out. Darshan did buy a bit of time, but he had to blow his flash for that, which was pretty big. Going back to that team fight that set all of this up, though, who he uh, he went for the offensive ult with his Lissandra. Very. Unless I'm telling you, unless you're guaranteed that kill, that pick, it's so risky because he only has the one vulnerability to rely upon. But here it is. Cloud9, return to the Baron, start it back up, and CLG, they have to know this is happening, they have to guess yeah. that it is, even though they don't have vision, there it is, Aphromoo's in there. They had a few walking down already towards the Elder, but CLG called off. They got it. No star call today is gonna be taking that. It does go over to Cloud9, and Elder Drake is also on the board, so CLG has that possibility. If they can get there, while minions are not crashing into their base, this is gonna get even harder. Okay. Yeah, C9 feeling pretty good. I mean, uh, Sneaky, the one with the mortal reminder, he's been sitting on for a while, trying to cut the healing yeah. uh, of Soraka. It's been it's been working, but it's still been ridiculously oppressive healing from CLG uh, with that front line boosted by Spirit Visages. Let's see if it will be enough to defend here, though, because C9 are coming for the secondary turrets. CLG don't want to give up kills here. Who he actually positioning for that flank? Look to get even more aggressive on these plays. Impact onto Hoogie immediately, causing him to claw out. Smoothie picked up the Mikhail, so even Sticks, or Sneaky rather, can go a little bit harder in these fights and get himself into a good position. And now Cloud9 push on with Baron. Minion waves haven't really pushed up too far, so it looks like mid lane will be what they were focusing on here. Just can't go too far ahead. We now see a Guardian Angel on Darshan him up as well. Meteos has one for himself, but it looks like C9 gives the respect necessary to CLG, and they're going to work the outside of the map before they get too far into the base. Yeah, the Elder Dragon is up as well, so nobody really wants to extend too far, go for one of those yeah, that's uh, true. super risky dives, uh, because that, even though there haven't been too many Drakes taken in the game, and it's a kind of a small Elder Dragon prize, it's definitely going to cause a fight here, and it's dropping really quickly. Trap line right there, gonna cut off CLG's front line. Darshan has to step on them to get through. 5,000 life on the dragon. They're not going for it. Not even going to attempt. The trap line set by Sneaky pretty much just shut everybody out. Darshan's gonna go down immediately. He just kept eating cupcake after cupcake. That's gonna give you an upset belly. He goes down, 17 to 10, coming up on 40 minutes. And now Cloud9 have free reign of a lane if they want. Oh once yeah. they start to split this. They've got the double late game buffs, Baron and Elder Dragon, two Drake Elder Dragon. So he's got that extra 45 on the, uh, for every Drake for the true damage burn. And they're gonna run right up mid lane here as Darshan's not gonna be back on the field for 40 seconds. This might be the end of at least one inhibitor, maybe two. 
I mean, Nexus turrets. Uhi is waiting on the fountain. He was getting the, his boost back up, but didn't want to fully go into the fight just yet. Seeing if home guards could make an impact. And they're going to go right on the Nexus turrets, Kobe. They're not really giving any love to CLG here. They're saying, we have a bit of a lead, and we're going to take a lot more. Sneaky's eyes are on the prize as he takes down the Nexus turrets. Meteos tries to go through Xmithy to get to the same cause. And now they're going to be back towards the fountain. Impact doing what he can to defend off basically Dark the entire team. And here comes a home guard at CLG. Xmithy very low, waiting for the home guard oh, to pop, but nobody's row. giving him the time of day for it to pop. It's almost causing him more trouble than it is useful. Stick say, getting two kills there. Who he and Afro are down. Darshan could be going down as well. That's a double kill coming in for Jensen. Cloud Nine's gonna stay for the long haul. They're in the base and they're looking for the Nexus. Finally taking it before three full games. Cloud Nine get a best of two series. They take it over Counter Logic Gaming. 21 to 10. C9 take down CLG in two games. Cloud9 with an impressive series here against the defending champs, and CLG are having a very rough start to this split. Jensen there, great on Victor, had map control the entire time, constantly chunking down Hoogie in the mid lane. Everybody on Cloud9 though, I mean Sneaky and Smoothie in the bottom lane, they subbed in Smoothie here. Again, they were able to pick up the victory, you know, a bit more defensive lane. They had this, the healing from Smoothie, came up very big at times. It was defensive, but I loved, again, the one, two, level one, two aggro. Bananas and just water. They were throwing <laughs> balloons at each other. And they literally got each other down to half while just Stixie and Sneaky were farming it out. So trying to put him to the test immediately. And Smoothie kind of stood tall there. The ultimates as well to keep fights going. There, his bubbles were hitting. Uh -huh. Really, Cloud9, uh, we're right to say this is a change we do because we can make that change, and it's how we want to play the team, and they've been doing a fantastic job with it. Conologic Gaming. <laughs> oh, no way. It's Body by Jensen. It's Body by Jensen. <laughs> Signature fragrance. I've never seen a real meme come to life. I want to, I want to actually alive. smell what it is. If it, is it actually a fragrance, or is there just water in there? It looks pretty ornate. I feel like they would go the extra mile oh and actually put uh, a fragrance.